This podcast is dropping on February 23rd, 2023. That's 2 23 23 2-23s. June Diane Raphael Shear is 23 digits, if you include the hyphen and her husband's last name. Her birthday is 01041980, which adds up to 23. Jeffrey Characterides adds up to 24, but if you misspell it as Jeffrey with one F Characterides, it is 23. This podcast is hosted by Tall John Shear. And if you assign the corresponding number in the alphabet to his name, you get 20, 1, 12, 12, 10, 15, 8, 14, 19, 3, 8, 5, 5, 18. If you add this all up, you get 69, which if you divide by the number of names, tall, John, sheer, 3, you get 23. But did you see the 69? We saw the number 23. So you know what that means. Now it's time for Hello, people of Earth, conspiracy theorists, unite. Today we are talking about a classic Jim Carrey thriller. The number 23 came out in 2007. And if you've not seen this film, uh, the plot is going to be a little bit <laughs> tricky to, to break down, but I'm going to try two weeks in a row. Uh, but basically, uh, we are following Walter Sparrow, played by Jim Carrey, who works as a dog catcher. <laughs> <laughs> who comes to find a book titled oh The Number I forgot that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you forget, forget this movie that. starts with him being Ace Ventura and I talking to forgot animals? I got that. <laughs> so this dog catcher um, comes to find a book called The Number 23, which sends him down the rabbit hole of The 23 Enigma, which is a real conspiracy theory. Um, I'm going to just play a quick clip to show you exactly how that comes into play. The Titanic sank on the morning of April 15th, 1912. That's 4151912. 23. The Hiroshima bomb was dropped at 815. 8 plus 15 is 23. The Mayans said the end of the world would come in 2012. 20 plus 1 plus 2 equals 23. Go ahead. Tell yourself it's just a number. And then a larger mystery unravels. Did Jim Carrey's character actually write the book? How much does his wife know? Is there a larger conspiracy? The answer is yes, as long as you don't think about any of the answers. To break this all down, I am bringing in my two and three co-hosts, my 23 co-hosts. What? Jason Manzukis oh, and wow. June Diane Raphael. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. We're wow. like, this is like the X-Files. We're like, uh, we're solving cases. This is a mystery. The crazy thing is like listening to you say that though, Paul, it, you, listening to your intro, like your math that you did was way more complicated than the math that is done over and over throughout the course of this movie. It's literally that most of the dialogue is simple math of just like <laughs> one, one plus two equals three and three plus two is five and five minus two is three and 32 is 23. And also like, and your last name is, is, uh, is sheer. And that, that name is 14 and 14 plus nine, you know, every, they're, they're assigning numerical value to Bizarre. colors, names, words, all pink this. Pink is 23. Red is, is a little less than because it's white. And so then now red is pink and pink is 23. And 32 is also 23. Like 14, <laughs> but if you add the one and the four, you get five. But if then if you take the five and you look at five, five is two and three together, okay. 23. I, I truly felt insane after this well, was over. It, 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 I will say, and I felt mad. You said something in the intro, Paul, that blew my mind. That there is, there is, this is based on real conspiracy theories around yes. the number 23. Yes, this is a real thing. And by the way, this is such a real thing that what? Jim Carrey oh, named no. his production company JC23 no. because he is obsessed with the number 23. Why did you decide to do this project? Uh, well, I was kind of obsessed with the number 23 for years, you know? You were. Yeah, I had a friend who passed it on to me like a virus, and uh, 
and it just uh, entered my life big time. It's everywhere, and uh, even though it's born at 2.30 in the morning, my daughter's born at 12, 11, I mean, it just kept going on and on and on in my life until I changed the name of my company to JC23 because somebody came up with a book that was about the 23rd Psalm, and he said, does this have anything to do with the 23 thing, man? Okay, now yes. this is all starting to click something. into place. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, he, now oh. I'm starting to understand. I mean, okay. so this is this is it. Like this is Jim Carrey's big Baby. thing. JC Twenty Three Entertainment is his production company, and they they're holy yeah. shit. Now, because okay, because as I was is, watching this, I was like, yeah, is that Jesus Christ? I was just the say, opposite that's of also six, Jesus six, six, Christ, six, which who two died? times three is six. Twenty three plus ten disciples is thirty three, which is the age Je- Jesus Christ was when he died. I mean, and this is where I mean, this is by the way, this thing <laughs> I, it, it can go on so long. William S. Burroughs uh, was the first person to really believe in twenty three as the enigma. You oh, know, a, uh, a totally normal man. Yes, so he a like, totally <laughs> normal. Uh, <laughs> the author of Naked Lunch, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then all of a sudden you start to see it in all these different things. I'll just read you a couple more because I know we've given you a million examples, but. But normal human sex cells have 23 chromosomes. Other human cells have 46, arranged in 23 pairs. The Earth's, mm. the Earth's axis is tilted at 23 degrees. Uh, musical acts with connections to number 23. Uh, Tool, Blink-182. Like, there are all these, like, 23 well, is an album. and the same yeah. for any... I mean, this is like... I, this is what I don't understand is... You can make so many numbers work if you do enough kind of, if you're backing into 23. I mean, couldn't we do that with any number? Well, yeah. I mean, honestly, (laughs) I I, I feel (laughs) like, here's what I'll say. I feel crazy. As as absurd as it is, and as I I agree with you, June, as crazy making as it sounds. What year, Paul, did you say this came out? 2007? 2007. So in 2007, this must have felt like this is preposterous i roll city right we live in a culture in a society oh, yeah. now where the conspiracy theories that a About. huge amount of the population like participate in and believe in are so much more ridiculous than this this makes well, this movie true. makes more sense than like QAnon nonsense. Well, this year- i actually thought like was this the beginning of q oh my god is jim carrey q <laughs> Well, I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of people who love this movie. And I got to tell you that there are. Oh, yes, because they are conspiracy theory nuts. Okay. And, and by the way, if you listen to the show, we're we're right behind you. We are support you 100 percent. But and are uh, you willing to commit? <laughs> are we just doing numerology? Is this numerology February? I mean, are we doing to be. Are we, next week? Are we oh, doing the lucky fun. number 11? <laughs> uh, the I, I just have to say that this is a, a perfect example of. These types of movies where somebody just has enough power to get their own weird idea out. And it's like, if I can just get this to the masses, like, because this really does feel like. Well, that's the thing, Paul. Here's my genuine question. Yeah. Okay. Because at the end of the movie, I felt insane. I was like, put me in an institution, please. (laughs) Uh, But I am genuinely asking at the end of the movie, is the story that that. Jim Carrey is insane or that the number 23 is actually coming for it's him. It's been ch- it chased his father both. And then and then it and it both. Yeah. So it's coming for him and so it made him crazy. But I guess that's what I'm saying is that the movie sort of affirms that 23 is a is a killer number and the devil's now, number. Much, yes. But, much like Jim Carrey Walter Swallow um, was infected by... Swallow? Sparrow. Sparrow. Sparrow, Sparrow. Sorry, sorry. They're both birds. Sorry, sorry. A sparrow. And that's I'm not so to be sorry, confused everybody. with his detective name, uh, the great... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> or the his wife, Fingerling. Robin. Fingerling. Yeah. Um, fingerling. Like the potato. <laughs> yes. I could not oh get God. past the potato. Or his pseudonym. <laughs> oh, his pseudonym is... Oh. This is the best one. The pseudonym is my Wait. favorite part because when you say it out loud, it gets really great. Top Secrets. <laughs> <laughs> AKA Top Secrets. Top Secrets. I laughed Top so secrets. hard at the reveal of Top oh. Secrets. Top Secrets. Secrets. Top secrets. Out. 
Top, Top Secrets. Secrets. Top Secrets, Secrets oh, is the author. My God. Top Secrets is the author of the book that Jim Carrey, Top the dog Secrets. catcher, finds. Now, here's what I'll say. <laughs> when this movie first started, this is in this era of sad Jim Carrey, like depressed Jim Carrey, mm. like a little bit after Eternal oh. Sunshine. He's got the long hair. And, mm. I, and he looks to me like he's a FedEx guy, right? Yes, he's got this long hair. Uh, and he's got it styled in a way that is like from guys in 2007, which is flat down on his head, kind of <laughs> matted down, even though like it, 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 he looks like. OK, but anyway, it doesn't matter. They give <laughs> when they give him flashbacks in the movie, the 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 young actor playing young Jim Carrey, mm-hmm. some 20 some odd years in the past, has the exact same haircut. Yeah. <laughs> That well, was, I was like, right. I was like, why did they give the kid that's in the late '60s a 2007 haircut? I, I have a feeling that that was a miscommunication from the director, uh, Joel Schumacher, to the uh, the hair and makeup team. It's oh like, yeah, yeah, he's God, Jim, that young made Jim me Carrey. Laugh. I mean, it was. It I'm is worried com- they're not going to oh know God. this is a flashback and it's young Jim Carrey. Make him look exactly the same. Well, at that point, we're not even supposed to think he's young Jim Carrey. We're supposed to think this is a young Top Secrets. Oh, that's right. It's young Top Secrets. That's yes. right. Because there's flashbacks inside of the fantasy sequences. Yes. This movie is like layers on layers on layers of of nothing, frankly. The the movie makes the movie is a zero. Like it adds up to no, like the in numerology senses or, or numerical senses, the whole movie is is time zero, so it ends up zero. <laughs> well, I will say this, when you meet him, Jim Carrey, I was like, what is this movie going to be about? It's going to be about like a sad man who finds something in this number 23. But then this reveal of him like in a truck looking miserable, depressed. And then it's like a comical decal on the side that's like, you know, he's an animal, you know, dog. He's a dog catcher, essentially dog catcher. He's like, he hates animals. I don't know how they ever expected us to get on board with a character that hates dogs. Like hates dogs and calls them evil, dead dogs and wants to catch them. And the first... the, the first the moment, first yeah. I, I was like, how I want, I was so angry at this character and I was so appalled at the treatment of these animals. It was so strange. I'm like, and and looking back on the movie, to be quite honest, Ned, the dog, I don't know why, why was Ned there? Why did he have to hate dogs? That cute little dog, you almost ran him over. Well, the dog essentially brought him into his first experience of death, right? I mean, the the movie is like, the movie I feel like can't decide if it's supernatural or not. Right. If there's actual, because, you know, like there's this element of like, oh, is the dog kind of um, provoking him into this journey of self-discovery and remembering and uncovering his his memories and stuff. Because the dog bites him, he chases the dog, and the dog goes right to the gravestone of the woman that he killed. Right. And then also later on, we see the dog with this man this very intimidating man oh, yeah is who's that who is, is that revealing who is that revealed is that? in the <laughs> very last seconds i think that that might have been the devil if it's if if okay here's my theory the oh, larger theory death? i think it's like the number 23 is the killer in this movie and it will always find you it will make you appear to be insane but you're basically just carrying out the will of the number 23 and the number 23 is the devil's number so the devil has a dog who then helps people get back to that? I don't know. That's part of what I would put together in here, like based on the if things the I know. If the devil had an animal, there's no way it would be a dog. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the like, Cerebus, there's Cerebus, the three-headed dog that yeah. guards the gates of hell. So there's that dog, but that's not I, what I, we're I, talking I, about here. There is, uh, there, what, the other thing I couldn't figure out is that scene at the end of the movie where we see the dog, Ned, we see this dark shadowy figure and they're at the gravestone at the funeral. Uh, The funeral for Laura, the woman that Jim Carrey killed, but they're having a funeral 15 years later? Well, because they never found her remains. Oh, that's right. That's what it is. Now now, they did. I would really love to get into why Robin took her skeleton and put it somewhere. I think to protect Jim Carrey. Oh, wait, Scott is saying her name is Agatha. Yeah, Agatha, Agatha. is her name. Robin, oh, is, Robin the is the son. But, but, Robin but, is the son. Right. No, no, you're right. Ag- but but yeah, Agatha Ag- wouldn't have known Jim Carrey to move the body. 
Well, no, because she found. Wait, no. No, Agatha I think she realizes it at that place, and she's read the, the book. Institute at Nathaniel. So she, oh, right, because so she figures because out Bud that Court. he's the author of the book. Right. When okay. yes, when Bud Court is. When she finds Bud Court's crazy room. Okay, wait. Let me just go back. Let me let me just go. Let me just go back. Let me just go back for a little bit, just because if you're listening to this, that, it sounds like, like pure. I would like the T-shirt to be Bud Court's crazy room. I would love. I mean, and let's it's make it just. It's a, just a red hued, <laughs> scrawl filled nightmare scape. Okay, I, but here's my question, Paul. And I'm sorry. I'm really sorry to interrupt. But my question about like 23 and the devil. So Agatha already wanted to to paint her broom. Can, can we red. just, let me just set up. Uh, sorry, let me, yes, yes, hold on. yes, yes. Sorry, yes, sorry. Yes, let me just yes, set up yes, one yes. little bit of here because I think this will help us. Uh, and June immediately turns off her camera. I, I'll say this. We meet Jim Carrey. He seems like a, oh, Jason just turned up. No, guys, I just have to explain one part of the plot. Uh, we meet Jim Carrey. He seems like he is a depressed loner, doesn't fit in. And then you reveal he is happily married to a beautiful woman and has a son and seemingly a pretty functional family life. Right. Not so just that, functional, I would say happy. Yes. So we have Virginia Madsen, who's Agatha, and we have Logan Lerman, who is uh, Robin, Robin. That's a son. I just wanted to set that up. So this weird character that we meet who hates dogs, who's xenophobic, is actually a very well adjusted like normal guy living a normal life. And all right. So now I just want to label who these characters are because it's going to get hard I'm to sorry. You're, no, you're so no right. also because many of them like there are a couple of characters like Jim Carrey plays both uh, Walter and right. Uh, yes. And he plays fingerling in the fantasy sequences, like yes. as does right. Virginia Madsen plays Agatha, but she also plays um, Fabrizia. Fabrizia in the in the. <laughs> 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 So the reason why this number, this book, this number 23 book comes into Jim Carrey's hands is because he is late to his own birthday dinner with his wife because this monster of a dispatcher from the dog impound makes him work a little bit later one night because because he turned down her advances in the best dialogue of all time. <laughs> oh, my where, God. Uh, he, she's basically like, why don't you t- t- take it out and wag your tail at me? And he goes, I wouldn't wag my tail in the bitches room with you if you were the last bitch on earth because it's a celebration party. It's his birthday party and it's but it's a dog themed birthday party. So his cake is a dog. So it's all well, the and dog. Also the, it looks like the ladies room has been covered over with the word bitch. Right. So and it does say the bathroom does say bitches room. It's also so convoluted. It's like, why would it, it's like having a birthday party for a lawyer and everything being law themed like this is the jury box. I had ba- so many questions <laughs> about. First of all, where does this movie take place? I don't know. Philadelphia. OK. In whatever. OK. So. Now, I know I know for a fact that in some places, the animal controller is an elected position in okay. some like small okay. towns. And stuff. Okay. Like, you actually I, I have do to not run think Jim office. Carrey had to run for this. <laughs> 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 OK, but my question is, how many people could possibly be working in this department? That it's they enormous. Could, it's enormous. Not only that. But there seems to be, in whatever small town, city this is, there seems to be a behavioral psychologist just for oh, yeah. the animal controllers. Yes. So that if they run into any traumatic experiences on the job, they can go talk to They've basically this taken person. all of the elements of a traditional police story. Yes. The yes. detect the, the 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 bar that services the detectives, the 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 mental health professional who helps out the the police who've had traumatic experiences and clear them for duty so that they right. can return to the force after a shooting or an event or whatever. All of those tropes from a police procedural story have been ported onto an animal control officer who let a dog get away <laughs> on his birthday. <laughs> and, well, and was bitten by a dog. Well, yes. I want to underline it one more time, too. It is 
A crazy way to meet a lead character. It's Jim Carrey. He first barks at another dog. He's an animal, you know, uh, controller. Was that and a bark, Paul? That first sound he made, I was like, I don't know what that is. He was taunting a dog. Do you think that this, all of this, he hates dogs. He's taunting the dog. He's talking to the dogs. Is this just a a, a bit or a a trying to reframe or change the narrative from Ace Ventura? I talk to dogs. Oh. I'm a goofball. That this is like, is this a wink or is this trying to? I thought about that. Because it, it's the movie starts and I was like, this feels like obviously referencing Ace Ventura. Like, I'm not always nice to animals. Right. I hate animals. I, In fact, actually. I can I'm, I can also hate animals. Yep. I, I have range. I mean, at this point in his career, Ace Ventura came out in 1994. This is 2007. I think oh, okay. I think he's pretty far away from, How you know. How close to the Schumacher Batman that Jim Carrey was in? Is the, like, is this another? Schumacher, Jim Carrey, were they like was, were on were they on set for Batman? And Jim Carrey I was mean, like, Batman listen, and, I got the Batman and Robin is 1997, guys. This is oh, this, this is, is a wow. years later. Yeah. yeah, guys, I I think that all this is is Jim Carrey's fascination with the number 23. It's I mean, just be. to put it in context, this is of the and era that's timeless. where he <laughs> he's kind of already had his ups and downs, and this is like just a weird sidestep because this is coming out in 2007 and he's already been Lemony Snicket. Uh, he already uh, did Eternal oh. Sunshine. Uh, yeah. He did Bruce mm-hmm. Almighty, right? So the, he did uh, Fun with Dick and Jane and then the number 23. And the next movie he made was Yes Man. So it's like, this is an odd, mm. like, it's not, you know, it's post-majestic. It's, you know, it's it's a weird moment of it's, his yeah, time. It's, it's- it's not in his heyday, it, right. but, it, but it's in this period where he's trying to do a bunch of different stuff. Yeah. Um, right. Interesting and trying to reinvent himself. There's a, it's, it's so interesting because I feel like one of the things we haven't mentioned is in the fantasy sequence of this, because uh, part of me feels like this is what uh, an element that Jim Carrey may have been drawn to is that he gets to play the affable uh, uh, everyman who's kind of spiraling out of control. But in the fantasy sequences, he the fantasy is all a noir detective story, like a, a, an incredibly washed out, stylized, femme fatale filled noir story. And where I feel like- he plays a saxophone. He plays, Let, I was going to say, and has bad tattoos. I mean, he plays a saxophone shirtless. <laughs> it's like that character from The Lost Boys. But here's what I-, I yes. I'm so, And I'm, I'm sorry to keep on- how can you be an everyman if you hate dogs? Well, I want to bring it back to he not as a, doesn't only hate dogs. He's also a kind of a racist because when he does confront that dog, he presents this like he is doing a monologue to this dog about how this dog is going to be eaten if this dog was in China. He's like, and I guess oh, also yeah. working oh, yeah. for like it's like a it. I just point that out for a couple of reasons because it's our lead character and. He is going to go into a descent of madness, but you start off going, this guy is fucking sucks. Like he and is. And <laughs> absolutely, Paul. And I would add that this is not a vicious dog. No, it, not at all. It's and I would also add. A pitbull mix of some kind who seemed like pretty docile. Yeah. Oh, and, and, and I would also add, what does he have to be such a dick about? Like what's That's he so what upset? He's what like, he's so he has upset a, about a wonderful home with a supporting, loving family. I mean, maybe he's haunted by the traumas of his past and just doesn't know it, and is waiting for a handmade book to be found and trigger his his memories. Can but- I ask something though? Why not have him find the book? Well, this is okay. This is my question. Why? Okay, Agatha said that she has read the book, but she's in the bookstore holding the book. So did she already read it before she went to the bookstore? Did she try to open him? Because oh, here's the thing, and we have to spoil this at one point because I think we have to unpack it. We find out much, much later in the movie that Jim Carrey has been in a mental institution, has one of the best 
exits of that. Like after they, he basically like, <laughs> basically he, um, he's in a mental institution. He's, he has amnesia, which makes him forget that he killed somebody. And as he's leaving the mental institution, the doc's like, well, I hope I don't see you anymore. And he's like, oh, I, I'm not going to come back. Like they have a joking dispatch from the mental institution. And then immediately as he walks out the door, he has a meet cute with Virginia Madsen where he like bumps into her and she drops a cake. And then they get together, but so this entire movie, she knows he knows nothing about his life before 23 years old. Well, and but why doesn't he know that? Why isn't right. he able? He he doesn't seem to, you know, he doesn't remember uh, whether it's amnesia or they tell they say because he tries to he tries to commit suicide and jumps out a window. And so they're not sure if it's trauma from the, the fall or if it's some sort of amnesia or if it's just whatever. But he doesn't seem to remember any of his past life. So, but th- mustn't his family understand? It, it does. The movie wants to have it every way, right. right? He wants they want him to be totally normal, and then through the process of re- finding and reading this book, and because that's what we haven't really said definitively. The book it's that about he, the book. The book that he had, the whole movie is about him becoming obsessed with this book and thinking that this book and this author is writing about him only to find at the end of the movie, obviously, that Jim Carrey, his character, wrote the book prior to going insane, uh, prior to amnesia, rather. The best part is that we find that out because Virginia Madsen rips off oh, a piece of paper that had been like glued to the title page of the manuscript where it said by, and then it said top secrets. What's his name again, Paul? Top secrets. Top, 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 top secrets. Yeah. <laughs> if that's, I can't deal with that. But who did top that? Did, did, did Bud Court do that? That's what I don't know. Who, who made the red that book? On? Who made the red book? You know, because here's the thing. There's By the end of the movie, there's two copies of the book. One we've spent the whole movie with, which is the red covered book. The red cover, which matches the red walls, which matches the red light bulb in Bud Court's chaos room. Like, And then there's the copy that is the manuscript, which is the loose pages that Jim Carrey types up and handwrites and glues stuff to. The last that, chapter's on a wall. And then the hotel. last chapter's on the wall <laughs> in the hotel. But who made the red book bud court uh, i don't know this, no, yes do yes not it, it, so basically no. this man went insane and Who? wrote this book uh top not, top, no no top secrets is <laughs> uh the fingerling doctor. or no basically no but he wrote the book jim carrey wrote the book so jim carrey wrote yeah. this book like as an insane person and then he's like "Ooh, <laughs> wouldn't this be great if i just self-published this book under somebody it, it's a wild ride i i don't know why he wanted to get that Wait, book you in. think he published you think, i don't think he published you know, it he sent I it think... to the he sent it to the thing he Who? sent it to the public i thought that i thought that bud court Published the book. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that, so, I yes. think yes. okay. I that think makes so sense. As, as the I doctor, thought you were saying oh, Jim Carrey. Oh no, no, I, so, I misunderstood. So basically, okay, got they it. take advantage of this guy. Got this, it. By the way, my stepfather uh, used to bring home um, beautiful watercolors uh, painted by schizophrenic patients of his. Uh, they're really wow. gorgeous. And June told me I couldn't put them in the house because they're too scary. Uh, <laughs> but uh, one, one was very frightening. <laughs> had nothing to do with this you know having schizophrenia or not it was just a uh, of course image. no no it, yeah. Yeah, but but so they basically like he's like ooh this isn't <laughs> I guess like Bud Court's like ooh this is interesting let me just like make money on this person who is not well publishes the book but then pops on <laughs> Topsy Secrets <laughs> and then and then <laughs> oh. that and then but then he gets obsessed about the number 23 in the publishing or reading of, of the it. book. So, so like, the book is like a read, virus. But this is what I don't understand. But then if, Agatha read it. She yeah, didn't go she insane. Fine. Robin is did reading read it? it. He doesn't go insane. But when did Agatha read it? Because she keeps on going, oh no, you're being crazy. You're being crazy. First of all, the family's so okay with him writing on the walls. They're where they're way relaxed with him going crazy. But like when did she read it? Like and because it seems like she's holding the book to set him up to open it. But, it did seem that way. But then she's like, I no, felt no, yeah. like I felt like he, he I, I will say this for a slim. It's a novella. 
Let's be clear. Yes. It's, it's 22 chapters. It's a shorty. I mean, by the way, it also I will also say it, it's a graphic novel at points, and there's there's pictures yeah. in there. There's, 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 there's writing. Yes, there's collage. <laughs> it's, it's a mixed media piece. But he really... There, inexplicably, for reasons I'll never understand, the movie continuously gives us the dates. Yes. Like, it'll be like February 5th. Uh, 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 so what you, I mean, and I don't know why. Uh, uh, the, the time, there is no ticking clock. There is no timeline. There is no reason uh, to be jumping back and forth in time and trying to help us by understanding what day it is. But what it does let us know is it's taking Jim Carrey weeks to read a very small book. So my assumption is his wife read it just in an appropriate amount of time, which is for a, a book that size, probably three hours. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good point. I thought for sure we were going to land, everything was going to culminate to a date that added up to 23. Oh, yeah, sure. <sighs> okay, well, right. his birthday is on February 3rd. We know that. Now, now let me also, let me also just say but this. But it didn't. <laughs> Nope. I mean, this movie also feels like, while it's really leaning into all this conspiracy, it also feels like, is it a parody of it? Because I thought that too at points. When he starts reading this book, it's as if Jim Carrey is reading it like this. Like, he's doing a bit. Like, listen to Jim Carrey's voiceover of him reading the book. Chapter one. You can call me Fingerling. It's not my real name. It came from a book I read as a child. Fingerling at the zoo. Paper flap long gone. It had a green hardback cover and mottled texture. It was possibly my very first book. Funny. I can't recall what it was about. The only thing I remember is the name. Fingerling. It was so weird. Like when he says, call me Fingerling. I'm like, All it's right. a bad, it's a bad book. It's also bad. Yes. I'm yes. like, this is not a book. This book is also like, I'm like, this is not compelling. I'm not, I'm not sitting up. Okay. Yeah. It, uh, well, I'm then not... when you realize it was written in a post-murder frenzy, yes. you're like, okay. But that's my question about Agatha, because I believe that Agatha had maybe, uh, Agatha's clearly already been um, like seduced by the devil. That's why she wants to paint okay. those walls red. Okay. So okay, she's so already I, been turned. Yes. So I think she had probably either already read the book before she saw it in the the gift shop. Oh, so maybe is Danny Houston the devil? That other doctor? Uh, uh, you know, maybe. I would believe that only because Danny Houston is always the bad guy. Yeah. yeah. So when Danny Houston was even in the when I saw Danny Houston's name in the credits, yeah. I was like, well, that's that's who did it. And then he turns out to be seemingly benevolent. He seems to be an ally to uh, Agatha and Robin in trying to help um, corral the more and more erratic Jim Carrey. Correct or no? Or is he just trying to manipulate him? I don't to what know. End? If, I thought it was going to be revealed at the end that Danny Houston had done the crimes, but was making Jim Carrey crazy to the point that Jim Carrey was going to be um, c uh, convicted of the murder that that it would seem as though Jim Carrey would I incriminate or Im like when Jim Carrey dug up the body I thought oh this is it they're gonna make it so that he gets arrested for this only to find out he did in fact do it you know interesting I I don't know because at the end of the day Danny Houston not a bad guy not a bad guy and I will say the bad guy is Jim Carrey and I did what I didn't understand is at the very end, and I'm jumping ahead, listeners. But at the very end, Jim Carrey says that um, because he's turned himself in, obviously the guy who was framed for the murder of Laura, well, which we haven't even got into the original murder, but whoever that college girlfriend of his was that he murdered, um, because she touched Danny Houston's, or no, she touched that other guy's finger. Well, no, she did have sex with him in the woods. Oh, she, yeah. oh, yeah, that looks so uh, uncomfortable. But she was, Very she was touching his, she was touching his fingerlings in the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they call him Detector Fingerlings. He's always looking now for fingers I touching other fingers. I cannot get over the fact that he named the character <laughs> Detective <laughs> Fingerling in his hard-boiled, you know, Philip Marlowe-esque character is Detective Fingerling. <laughs> But here's my question. At the very end, he says, when he's talking to his son, Robin, that he's going to be in jail for a while. Justice has been served. 
and you know he he's going to be serving his time until he gets parole. Why would this man ever get paroled? Oh, yeah. because they feel like Why? it was like because he said the judge took kindness on him because he came for basically the judge was like you didn't have to do this so I'll go easy <laughs> yeah. on you. Oh. Like, hey, I'll hey, hey, you, you know you what? You did me one, I'll do you one. Like, yeah. no, yeah. you you killed someone. Yeah. And not only that, but another man sat in jail for her, like, for, for 23 years. years. Right? Oh, 23? I don't, well, I don't yeah, know. I, was, I, said, I don't know. I know 15 plus 15 is 30. And then if you take 30 and you... Minus seven. Seven, you're going to get to 23, so... Yes. I do think, though, it's like, it's so weird, because even in that final moment when they're at the gravesite. The devil man and dog are close. But everyone's always spying on people in very close proximity. Like when Jim Carrey <laughs> is watching his wife and Danny Houston in that uh, restaurant, he's so literally standing by. in the middle of a, <laughs> of an empty street staring into a big bay window. It's like if any like you would catch it in the corner of your eye. Like it's not he's not even trying. Like the, everyone is just there. Like the other person standing at the cemetery, like. I'm um, like right two there. feet away. I'm two feet it away. It felt like, oh yeah, God. it felt like there was, it was, it's so unsatisfying. Mm. This is a murder thriller mystery whodunit. I love it, these it wants types to be, of movies too. It wants to be an erotic thriller because there's all yes. these kind of like uh, transgressive sexual things that are happening as in the flashback, especially. Fabrizia. Oh, yes, we with Fabrizia. <laughs> and then there's also like an element where I felt like Jim Carrey was like, I want to make seven. Yes. I want to make yes. my seven, my gritty, stylized crime thriller, blah, blah, blah. It, except that at the end, the, the the ending is so unsatisfying. It's that he's been the killer the whole time and that he just didn't know it. There's no outing of the bad guy. There's no yeah. satisfying uh, unraveling of the mystery no, and the revelation of the real murderer, blah, blah, blah. It, it's just what it, it, what it feels like to me is when you've been in a writer's room or you're trying to come up with a solution for something and it's like late, it's like 11 o'clock at night and it's like, all right, here's the deal. You know what it is? He wrote the book. She knew about the book, but she's also by the devil. And and he, so he hit the body. It's It sounds good, fast, fastly pitched, right? And then everyone's like, oh yeah, that is good. And then you go home and then the next morning you come back and you're like, oh, what did we come up with? Oh, that doesn't make any sense. But then they're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Fuck, fuck, fuck. We already cast Danny Houston. Ah! So he's got to be the murderer, I, I right? He's Danny Houston. When you look at my notes in a one section, this is these are the notes right after each other. Who is this? She wrote the yeah. book? He wrote the book? <laughs> he was the detective? Wait, and it so wasn't crazy her? Like that. Danny Houston, is that my, my notes, Paul, my notes are so <laughs> similar. They're just almost, there's a huge chunk of my notes that all just, is this a homemade book? Movie <laughs> we're in is in the book? Like uh, all these, everything equals 23, but not really. Really? It's all just questions. All of mine are, why is he speaking to dogs like this? How dare he yeah. hate dogs? Why <laughs> must way, he hate I, dogs? I, I, I'm going to tell you this. I, I know that we talked a lot about the number 23. I thought this movie was off the rails when the son gave him his birthday gift and it looked like a five-year-old made a mug for that him. That like, was <laughs> the son crazy. Seems like, the son seems like a straight up high school. Like, the son is totally making out with normal. his girlfriend yes. on the couch. He's like, here, the dad. The son is like a 16-year-old. They all have a lovely relationship and dynamic to each other. And the son it looks like he made him something in like one of those pottery places that you go to but for like, what a, a seven-year-old. Old birthday party. What a, what a small it's like, it's childhood like, me. It's like it like it's so off. It's not pretty in any way. It's like world's best dad. It's like <laughs> all right, all right. This eighteen year old made this. I just want to go back to Jim Carrey's weirdness. I'm watching the movie for clues. I'm like, what's going on here? Did you see that weird moment where like Jim Carrey's like trying on his like his uh, vest for before he goes to the birthday party? He's like, I look like a rock star. I'm yes. like, oh, I missed what is the that. fuck are you talking? Really? What? And he what? Said, he, I'm sorry, but Paul, I want to be clear. He says, I look like a rock star to, to his son yeah. or to Virginia. Like yeah, he's right? trying to get fucked. And then you reveal that he's got a wife. Yes. Like you don't know. And then yeah. it doesn't matter. By the way, it doesn't matter because he goes to that party and they do want to fuck him anyway. That woman, the supervisor, that's where the scene happens where she says, wag your tail at me. Uh, so he is he is like he's in his movie being like, I need to be an object of sexual desire, but also a family man. Uh, uh, but yeah. also I have to say this. I have a, I have a theory. I don't know if I've talked about this theory here, but I'm going to talk about it now, which is. 
I believe that in every movie, Jim Carrey must show himself fucking because it's like, I am still a wanted man. Like in Ace Ventura, arguably one of the goofiest fucking movies he fucks and it's like, and he's good at it. Like, it's not like it's, it's a funny scene, but like the scene isn't funny like that about him fucking. It's like, oh no, no, he's really good at fucking. All the animals are watching him fuck. And it's like, and it's a weird choice. Like, I feel like Jim Carrey's like, I just need to let you everybody know, like, I may be weird or whatever, I'm goofy, but I do I'm, funny voices. Yeah, but I still fuck. <laughs> but yeah, I get I it done. Good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just because I'm just because I'm wearing the mask. Don't worry, I fuck. <laughs> there, there is something, and I, I have to do a deeper research wow. on this. But every time I see him in a movie, I'm like, it comes out of nowhere that people are like, I want to fuck you, and that's and that's yeah. never like. And we've been watching a lot of Adam Sandler movies because our kids have been really enjoying them. It's been great to watch. Like Sandler doesn't carry himself like that. Bill Murray doesn't carry himself like that. Like Steve Martin doesn't. It's like he's you're like I fuck. Right, you're right. Yeah. And it's such a it's it's hard in a way because with Ace Ventura, it's such a funny movie and our kids love it. But we do have to constantly. Oh yeah, that movie is the down like age run in and fast forward Jim Carrey fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of things in there around sex that is a little yeah, messy. I mean, yeah. it, it takes it's all new meaning for uh, take you to the pound. By the way, the opening scene hmm? of fucking Ace Ventura, <laughs> he like he has, he has this like he steals a dog, right? The reward for stealing a dog is a blowjob. Blow yeah. Like the woman's like, I what? gotta blow you. Yes. That's like that's like the opening. That's okay. like the cold open. I'm gonna open. be honest. I don't. Th- I'm, I'll be honest. I don't think I've watched Ace Ventura for. It's quite funny, you know. I mean, he's so I mean, he's great very good in it. In it. Yeah. Probably 50, 20 years. I'll tell you this you know? much. The the rumor I heard about Ace Ventura was that Jim Carrey couldn't get a movie, you know, was trying to get a movie together, couldn't get one, and gets Ace Ventura and is like, this script is terrible, but I'm going to make sure it's going to be great. And every day would stay up until like two or three in the morning writing the pages for the next day to make sure it was great and 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 really imbue this character and make it awesome. And I feel like he needs a little bit more of this energy in t- movie 23 to make it make sense. I feel like <laughs> somebody, no one was looking at the next day's pages or they were and they weren't looking at the, what they already shot. I don't know. Uh, oh Jim Carrey God. did fire his agent at the <sighs> test screening of this movie. At the screening. Whoa. Which is also like, fuck you, because you clearly wanted to do this. You can't fire an agent. Like, it's not like you, <laughs> it's not like, all right, paint my house. I'll come home and see what it is. Like you are you're an accomplice. Like you were on set. Yeah. You saw it. Was, you got that bad back tattoo. You picked up the saxophone. You knew what you were doing. <laughs> you, this, this, I mean, now that I understand he was obsessed with the number 23 and all this, this has got to be a passion project. This is his toy. It's his friend. Yes. His friend, Fernley, Fernley Phillips, who is the writer of this, his friend. Uh, uh, oh, okay. yes. Yeah, Did anyone Phillips. else notice that when he wrote a note to Agatha, when he was leaving to go dig out the skeleton at the park, which also had a name that, you know, rhymed together. Um, did anyone else know notice that the note he left for Agatha that he put on on the refrigerator and put a magnet on it for her to see, his handwriting was so <laughs> flowery and flourished. I don't know if we have a screen grab of it, but it was the most kind of feminine... Swirly. Don't you? I always assume that is a props department a person. Thousand wrote that percent. Note. But yeah, it was oh, okay, just good, so okay. hilarious. It's uh, hilariously not him. Yes. Because it should look like the chaotic scrawls that are on that his been, arms that he's been doing absolutely. on his arms, on the walls, on the yes. pa- on I mean, everything. This was in... cursive, like pure cursive. Yeah. I, I will say the interesting thing about Fernley Phillips. The writer of this is he's only he's only credited with the number twenty three. It's like, got to be a suit. I'm that's got to be a sure suit. That Jim Carrey wrote this, right? Of him, but like oh, he never, oh, okay. but he never wrote any. Like it's not even like oh, it, like I've never seen an, an IMDb page. It's it's one. It's one credit. Ah, that's got. I there's think something. there's something going on. I, I I would argue that Jim Carrey wrote this movie. That's what I just said. Yeah, th- yes. I feel like Jim Carrey wrote this and under a pseudonym, and Fernley Phillips is like his Tony Clifton. Yeah, Fernley Phillips, IMDb. I'm, I'm like, oh, I'm boy. just. <laughs> I, 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 what are we doing? We can't be going down the rabbit hole. We're doing it. We're doing the number twenty three. <laughs> we're, we're stuck in a conspiracy. <laughs> That's what I was saying. Like they did this to us. The number twenty three is out for us. I'm dead serious, guys. Fernley. 
Fernley you Phillips guys are both is clickety not. Clickety clackety. Yeah, I am going through like a conspiracy oh, theory. Okay, all right. So I just, I just, I just found. Okay, I just found the New York Times. Molly and I are finding it at the same time. Okay, so okay. In February two, this is their wedding announcement. In February t- two thousand two, Fernley Phillips was an undiscovered Hollywood screenwriter with a month to go before his money would run out and he'd have to go home to England. He was so low on cash that he would wait until McDonald's offered hamburgers for twenty nine cents and buy five to save money for the coming week. Alyssa Ferguson was an associate producer working for Bo Flynn, reading 30 to 50 scripts a week. When Phillips' screenplay, The Number 23, landed on her desk, it was love at first sight. I thought this was probably the best script I'd seen in my entire life. And that's how they met. She read this script. And wow. uh, and uh, and that's how they... Like, this movie united them over the movie 23. Wow. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm, okay. I mean, I'm yeah, and it looks stunned. like he's written other things too. Okay, it yeah, does look it? like he's written other things. I, have I don't know, okay. Jason. No, I don't Jason, see where you're does... seeing that. Sorry, I mean, I'm saying he's. It, it, I'm. I'm saying he is credited as having written features for Paramount, okay. Warner Brothers, Universal, okay. Fox, and okay, now so maybe these never... may not have been produced. Got it. Okay, but there are plenty of people who have successful. Successful yes, very careers successful without, like, in yes. which in which they get paid to a lot of money to write scripts that then eventually do not get made. I so. love that the like he found the love of his life from writing the movie, the number twenty three. Like this is Incredible like it would stuff. be it would be a very different story. Uh, oh, and he teaches a screenwriting class. We're we're going deep. He teaches a uh, he teaches a screenwriting class. So he all right. So he's a real person. We, we apologize for suggesting that this was that he was a student. <laughs> yes, uh, but by the way, um, and now we're going to sign up for his class. Uh- <laughs> it's very interesting to see all of the other celebrities that were at. The premiere of the number 23. <laughs> oh, whoa. Oh. Should this be a segment? <laughs> this, yeah, this who is a came segment out? we've never done. Well, I have a question I'll tell about you, this. Um, I'll tell you who is there. Stacey Keebler. Oh, oh hey. Rosario Dawson. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, came out to support, which is always nice to see. Uh, well, I want to ask this question. Can I quickly say? Uh, yeah, go ahead. What is, your, what is your take on this? Do you, do either of you show up to a movie that you have no involvement in, and, and and let's bar a very close friend's something. But like this is like, oh hey, uh, you know this is a movie premiere, and take away COVID and everything like that. Like, do you show up if you're not involved in it at all? Now, I, I, just to clarify, you mean like walk the carpet and be photographed? Yes, right. Yes, okay. You're not saying do you go to the movie? Oh you're no, saying, no, no, yeah. Do you go to the premiere? And do you get photographed yes, for the come out. for a movie? Because there are you certain were friends in. I know that like will say, "Oh, I got I got I'm going to go to this premiere tonight." Oh, did you have anything to do yeah. with it? No, no, no. I'm just so going to go walk the carpet. Yeah, I don't. Okay, un- I don't. I mean, like you said though, unless I'm supporting a friend, right? Like if if you had a movie that was going and you invited like, hey, come me and, yeah, to come, yeah. Even if I wasn't in it, I certainly would come and support you Same. know your film yes. or whatever. Uh, but no, I wouldn't go to. Now, let me be clear: if they said come to the premiere of Fast 10. Oh. Fast and Furious 10. I'm in. I would go and and if they said, do you want to walk the red carpet? I would be like, absolutely I'm 100%. Yes. I mean, that's like, different because we are involved in that one. That's what I think done too. It. But but no, no, I wouldn't randomly go to some random uh, premiere. Rather, yeah, I know? would definitely go for a friend, obviously, but I wouldn't go either unless it was a fast movie or it was a movie that I felt like super attached to. Right. So this, I'm just, I'm just saying, so these people who are showing up, they're coming because either they're part of, uh, you know, maybe they're part of this. Maybe they're, they're 23 conspiracy theorists. Maybe, I don't know. I don't want to lie. They're 23 and me. A part of me wonders though, if some of these actresses might've been in an, a cut of the movie. And cause I know I have a number of friends who did not find out they were cut out of the movie until the premiere. Whoa. Oh yeah. So it's also not, possible not, they thought you mean they were movies, in it. Not my, not my, movies, my favorite, movie, my favorite Christina thing Applegate was Applegate was there too. I I showed up. Uh, oh, wow. I was in that Larry David movie. Um, clear the history. One, the clear history. And I I went. I was excited. I, I knew I was in it. I shot with Larry for like uh, a day. I went with and you. I'll never forget. He was the pretty much the first person to arrive. He was the first the person to arrive. For his own movie. <laughs> uh, and then they 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 displayed the red carpet on the on the screen. So like, as you were sitting in your seat, you could see people walking, right? You couldn't hear it, but you could see it. And 
Larry got up to take people off the red carpet so the movie would start on time, which was one of the best moves I've ever seen for the lead. Amazing. He was already, but when I walked in to that movie, uh, I bumped into him in the lobby. He was like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> I, we, we cut that, we cut that scene. It's, it, it, we, we cut it way, way, way down. Oh no. It was, it was <laughs> such a funny moment of him realizing it. And then it does, it does sting a little bit when sure, you, uh, of you know, yeah, but it's, uh, you know, it, but it was nice. That oh, especially, it. I would think especially to find out at the premiere. Yes, yeah. You've gotten dressed up. You've, yeah. It's horrible. <laughs> Uh, all right. So anyway, <laughs> down that rabbit hole, I will say this. What is Jim Carrey as a private investigator if he's meeting with suicidal people? Because he's not a cop. He's a P.I., right? Did he start as a cop and get like oh, disgraced? Was he? Did, wasn't there a thing where they were like, you're not a detective anymore? Or something like well, that. Well, that was that was moment that... where he goes, did they take away your gun? And he's like, yeah, but hold yeah. on, but hold on. Yeah. But but when he first meets with that woman, she's kind of hanging, like she hung herself. This movie's a representation of, of suicide and Wild. and mental illness, frankly, is deeply troubling and problematic. Yeah, yeah. I mean... It... Uh, like, across the yeah. board, everything from the, from the hospital to the whatever is going on with him, with everybody, everybody, it, it, the, the treatment of mental illness in this movie is absolute, you know, just frankly, nuts. Well, maybe because uh, maybe they're all you know, they're all uh, obsessed with the number 23. So they're not, you know, they can't be doing their job. But that, but that idea that he's like meeting with her, like he's meeting with a woman before she commits suicide to talk to her about why she, I mean, this is where the movie really like, I don't I, understand I what the fuck is that. going on. I couldn't follow that. And I, I guess know. it makes well, sense that it's written by somebody who is having a, a mental breakdown as well, because it is, it is confusing. I mean, it's confusing. It's confusing. Oh, right. yeah. No, it, that's the thing is none of the because we spend so much time inside the story, inside the book. Yes. Where Jim Carrey is portraying Detective Fingerling. Again, <laughs> I can't state it enough. His name is Fingerling. <laughs> um, And we spend so much time in that story that and and, and it, it features Jim Carrey narrating voiceover for the movie, hard boiled kind of again, like like Raymond Chandler style noir, hard boiled detective stuff, and it's nonsense. None of, we the the story of the book, the detective fingerling story, doesn't make any sense. No, he's not he's not on the case. He's just jumping around, fucking people, holding his sacks. This is Chekhov's sacks. He he's holding it, but he never plays. By it. the way, uh, I will say this: um, I wrote it. I jumped up in the middle of watching this movie last night, like I had figured it out. I've only every now and then. I <laughs> every now and then there'll be a moment. Like I figured out the sixth sense before the reveal, and I was like so proud. Like I was like, ah, oh, I did it. And I saw the, and I, I was able to enjoy the movie like for like the the next ten minutes, like seeing what I knew. I jumped up the same way last night, and I was like. He's got rabies. That's what I thought the entire movie was oh, like. Oh wow! He's got I crazy. love that. I love that as a um, as a from the from the initial dog. Yes, bite. yes. It's like he got Great. rabies. That's and he's gone crazy. He didn't treat it. Wow. He didn't take it seriously. And then they never even discussed that. That was. <laughs> But I really was. That like, would have been incredible because you know perfect. rabies. Once it takes over, it will. It just yeah. you're you're done. It's over. And that's what I thought would have been interesting. I was like, oh, this this is like, but this whole idea of this larger murder plot, and then it's also like you're doing something really weird, which is like you're telling three stories. You're telling the story of the dog catcher who has amnesia, who killed this girl that he loved, but then that's also being personified in another book because he's also the suicide blonde. She jumped out the window but he actually jumped out the window because mm. he was feeling that so like the movie opens with the end it's very like and then when you try to connect the pieces it doesn't even make it doesn't make Not sense nor do they even do like that fight club thing of like oh you see what you were missing nope. right. yeah that's what they they never filled in the blanks for you they just you know they they, they just give you a couple of reveals that are 
just not satisfying. You know, like the other thing that's really unsatisfying is just the end, the end of the movie. Like when he, it should feel incredible when he gets to that room and is ripping the wallpaper off to discover that chapter 23 of the book is on the walls of the hotel. That should be a fucking awesome reveal where you're like, whoa, the missing chapter. And you're like, wait, what? What? What is going? What? 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 What is this? Also, th- there's so little. There's so little. The movie is full of truly insane moments that that get no reaction from people. When Bud Court slices his own neck open with a box cutter in the mailbox store, nobody yells. Do you nobody mean the screams. mailbox facility, as Virginia Madsen refers to it? I'm sorry, the MF, the mailbox. <laughs> I love Virginia Madsen. By the way, I also like love Virginia I'm Madsen. Obsessed. Like, like her Virginia, too. it made me think of like, where is she, and why don't I see more of her? Like, for, um, she, she was terrific in but this. Virginia Always. Madsen and Logan Lerman, both gr- great actors, and I will say, even Jim Carrey in this, all like selling it. Like, except for Jim Carrey's voiceover, everyone. Like, I mean, but Virginia Madsen, like, I'm like. Oh, you're, you're, she, but you're like, you're, you have to do the hardest thing, which is like, you come home, your husband's written all over the walls and you're like, Hey, all right. What's, what's on your mind, honey? Like, I agree. I agree. I feel like Virginia Madsen and Logan Lerman, uh, and to a lesser degree, Danny Houston, but really Virginia Madsen and Logan Lerman are doing an incredible, are doing yeoman's work Whoa. trying to ground this movie into like reality you know by being like okay virginia Go madsen ahead. was married to uh to danny houston what oh i didn't know that from 1989 to 1992 you, i like that you almost just said that she was married to logan <laughs> <laughs> wow um, so they were oh, that's interesting okay not cool. married Wait. when they were in this movie no together. But wow. I just, yeah. Wow. When were they married? From 1989 to 1992, a short-lived one. Oh, interesting. So this was a reunion of yeah. sorts. For, uh, wow. I don't okay. think I knew she was married to uh, Antonio Sabato Jr. Oh, wow. Oh, I didn't or know Or had that a child either. with him. Wow. wow. It, we're getting into it, it guys. <laughs> we're deep in Madsen. <laughs> She was great. She was great in this. And and, because there was also a period where and I don't know what you guys felt like there was also a period where I was like, oh, she did. Yes. And I was like, "Okay, I'm 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 on board for that version of it where she is her past is coming back to and 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 because of this book or someone is taunting her because because she is the first person who finds the book. You know, so I was like, oh, is this is this somehow uh, uh, her um, perpetuating or putting this thing in motion? Can I just can I just quickly pitch out what I think this story is and tell me if I'm right or wrong? Jim Carrey's dad has been haunted by the number 23. Jim Carrey, uh, his father kills himself. Jim Carrey then, you know, feels like, oh, my gosh, my dad had this little curse, but I'm doing OK. I've, I'm in love with a girl. Everything's going great. Catches his girlfriend cheating on him. And then the number 20, that's the number 23 is kind of infecting him at that point. He kills his girlfriend, um, blames it on someone else, but that forces him to go crazy. He tries to commit suicide, gets amnesia goes to this hospital, gets better. The number 23 is gone, immediately meets Virginia Madsen. They get married. They have a very happy life, besides the fact that he hates dogs and he's slightly racist. And everything is okay until he finds this book. But we don't know anything, and then we know what happens there, but we don't know anything about how Virginia Madsen gets corrupted or why she is the way she is. Why she wants the what walls? Why she wants the walls blood red? Is she working for oh, the devil? Oh, oh, no, when I, yeah. she read the book, like we don't know anything about this character. I, I think the movie. I don't think. The, well, I don't know, Juna. I'd like to hear what you think, but I don't think the movie thinks Virginia Madsen has been corrupted or okay. is any sort of. I think Virginia Madsen, Danny Houston, Robin, the son. I think they all exist in the in a. In, 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 they are benign. I don't think any of them are have malice or malicious intent. Uh, and maybe that's why they cast Danny Houston was to throw you off the scent and yeah. be like, you think he's going to be the bad guy, but he's actually helping, you know? Yeah, I don't. I genuinely don't know because I did find it suspect that she was painting the walls red. I mean, what a color, yeah. you know? And But also blue. One of the other rooms she was painting blue during the movie. Okay. But she also found the book. Well, yes. that her finding the book and then and then her trying to s- throw him off the scent. I don't know. There's something there. Like, but you said that she also. So who hid the body? 
She hid the body. She did. She hid the skeleton. She, she, I think she, and once she, okay. So once Bud Court slices his neck open in the mailbox facility and he says to her, go to the Institute, you know, it's, it's, you'll find it, go find it, go to the Institute. So, and she pulls out of his pocket his ID card for Nathaniel, the Nathaniel Institute. Is that right? That's correct. And his name, his name is Sirius Leary. <laughs> his name, right. I yeah, believe, you're right. is Dr. Seriously. Yes. <laughs> I think his name is basically Dr. Seriously. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. So, 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 but he, and he... <laughs> He has in his pocket his hospital ID for when so and she takes it and she goes to the Nathaniel Institute, which is covered in like razor wire and has clearly been shuttered for a decade at least. Right. Yes. At least. Why is he still carrying his ID in his pocket? She walks right in. The light bulb is red. There are lit candles. In this abandoned facility, I couldn't make heads or tails out of any of this. Why? Why are there so many candles around that, that that are lit? I'm assuming she lit them. Why is there a red light bulb? It's fucking crazy. But anyway, she goes. She finds the locker, the foot locker that has all of her husband's stuff. She finds the manuscript. She rips the paper off of it, the top secret, and finds his name underneath. Right. Right. So this is where she learns everything. Then she goes and she realizes he killed whoever. And she goes and takes the skeleton because she doesn't want him to be caught. Is that what's happening? I to protect do not him. know. I do not know. Because I'm not sure why she's protecting him. Like, I don't think he called the I cops. Don't know so protecting him from what exactly? From the cops. Okay, so at that point she knows. But at that point, does she know he killed Laura? Someone, yes. She because does. she realizes he wrote wow, this Wow, what story. a wife then, honestly. Yeah, yes, yes. You know? Relationship goals? <laughs> <laughs> Truly, like, I... Uh, much respect. I, I, I'm I, I'm reading through some, some interviews with um, the cast, and I want, want to read you this. I feel like they were all... They all drank the Kool-Aid pretty early on because this is... Uh, this is kind of interesting. It's like, Virginia Madsen's like... I love this. The number 23, you know, there's so many things in case you're a doubter. And then Carrie's like, yeah, there's, there was a phenomenon on set. You know, if you know that my name and, and Schumacher's name, you put them together, that's 23 letters. And then Virginia Madsen goes, yeah, well, Danny Houston and I were married 23 years ago. And, you know, and so like the, they're, they're all like up. They, I think that they've lost the plot on set a little bit too. It's like, the, and I think what they're all saying. Well, yeah, because that makes no sense. Because you, you, what they can't do is be like, well, yeah, because uh, Virginia Madsen and Logan Lerman's names together. Oh, wait, no, those aren't well, okay. No, no, so not those ones. Okay, so how Jimmy, about you know? This is what this is what Joel Schumacher says. He's like, you know, I. He was like, I wanted. To, he's like, this is my twentieth movie. I, I wish it was twenty three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I couldn't. And then and then they they do this thing where they say. He he find, he sees the dog again. He, the dog takes him to the cemetery again, and then the priest comes out and says that the dog is the guardian of the dead. Well, that's that the devil dog, or is it a angel dog? Is the dog helping solve and bring closure to this? All I know. That's a good question. Soul? Because why would Laura? Why would this dog be a devil dog? If La why would Laura be in hell? She didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, Laura needs to be put to rest. And is the dog trying to bring closure to her restless soul? Well, First of I, I, all, all dogs yeah. are angel dogs. All dogs go to okay. heaven. Okay. Yes. All dogs all go, to, dogs heaven. go sure, to heaven. Sure, sure. Must love so dogs. So let's be clear about that. Well, can we can we just say that I will talk about this? Uh, and this is a very serious thing, actually. The dog did not show up to the premiere. I think that they did have a falling out. The dog is Snub. not like the way he was edited. Yeah. Wow. 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 Uh, and that okay. is, of course, and we're talking about Ned, who played Butch, 
Uh, and this was Butch's acting debut. You know, he was very comfortable with the cast. Um, you know, uh, and even when he was being chased by Jim Carrey, you know, that, like so. Ned is Ned is <laughs> great little work there uh, by Ned. I don't know, you guys. This doesn't, you know, it just doesn't. No pun intended. Add up. Oh, oh yeah. Remember so when true. he tried to hit the dog too? Yes. I was so upset. He literally. And what was that about exactly? What was that moment about? Why was he trying to kill the dog? Because I think the dog represents his, his, if he didn't get bit by the dog, he would have been on time to his birthday dinner. And if he was on time to his birthday dinner, he would never have looked at the book. And okay, his life so would have been great. all these things might be true, but like now we have to go kill that dog. And not only that, but why do we have to bring the family along for it? The like he brings family. his family along for killing dogs, digging up bodies. Getting into in- the mailbox facility to watch a man slit his throat. It feels like they're all with the with the same level of intent as like, let's go play Pokemon Go together. <laughs> yeah, let's do some ge- geo catching or whatever. It's, yes, some geo caching <laughs> by digging up the bones of a woman that I killed 20 years ago. Like, what is yeah, this? Yeah, like it's a, it's team building. He's a bad dad. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, obviously, we have opinions about this movie. And I want to bring you into the world of the people who love this movie. Because now oh, it is time no. for second Opinions. The movie was a piece of shit. Yet this person recommends it. Tell me what is the message? Maybe that art is subjective. I need a second opinion. All right, these are five-star reviews culled from Amazon. I might even start taking them from Letterbox as well because these are pretty great. Um, this one just starts out, uh, title is Solid Movie. Jim Carrey made a good movie, but there is one flaw only. No reference to Michael Jordan, who is number 23. So there you okay. go, but five stars okay. nonetheless. You know what five stars is? Two stars and three stars put together. Oh, you're right. Uh, wow, look at that. Holy shit. Jingle customer writes, I know for me the movie seemed to drag a little, but when things, uh, a.k.a. the truth, starts to unfold, then it starts to make sense, and you will come to realize you may not have been paying attention. This is a movie you're going to want to watch again because you need to watch it like The Sixth Sense. I first saw this movie when it came out, and this was only the second time I watched it, and I couldn't remember how it ended, but I'm the type of person who likes knowing what's going on. So, like, I like spoilers, and it helps me enjoy movies because, you know, if something doesn't make sense right away, I'll get bored, but that's just me. This is a good movie, and if you're like me, I would say be patient and watch, and they will all make sense. Five stars. Suspense. Dot, dot, dot. Pay attention. Guys, I just realized something that's really fucking me up. I watched this movie on Amazon Prime. Okay. And 23 is a prime number. Oh! Oh. It's fucking real! Here we go. All right, I have two quick ones here. Uh, This is from Dominic Calandra. My name is Dominic Joseph Calandra. If you count the spaces as characters, there are 23 characters in my name. I was born on 12, 17, 93. It adds up to 23. Or if you prefer, 12 plus 17 plus minus 9 plus 3 is equal to 23. I check the time right after the character turns to look at the clock. His said 11, 12. Mine said 9, 23. Checked again later in the movie at a random time. What time was it? 9, 59. Added up. I had a friend who was born on March 23rd. We have 23 mutual friends. Facebook friends. She said she couldn't remember a large amount of her childhood. I never found out why exactly coincidences, but Jesus, that's weird. Stay safe. Five stars. Am <laughs> I top secrets? <laughs> Stay safe. <laughs> Am I top <laughs> secrets? <laughs> top secrets I'll never forget and top Sirius secrets. Leary. Dr. Sirius Leary and Top Secrets. This is some <laughs> next level Kratz nonsense. Detective fingerling. This, this is I absurd. Feel like this, I feel like this movie is a prank. It, That's what I'm saying. It, it, it plays at parts it, like it is yeah, a prank. I feel utterly ill. Oh, oh my, my god. god. I really uh, don't feel well. I really I mean, don't. Uh, <laughs> Top secrets. 
Top, top secrets. secrets is some next level stuff. <laughs> like, because you also feel like they like, but this is also, we have to just <sighs> briefly just mention like Joel Schumacher. I feel like he's like, yeah, top secrets. I like it. Like, like, I feel like it's like, oh yeah. Like, you know, he's just like, so crazy because it's like, that's not a name. Topsy <laughs> is not. <laughs> Topsy, like Topsy Kretz. Top- what are you talking about? By the way, just have it. Like, just have of it. Of course, written. it is. It's Topsy Kretz. You know my, you know my very serious girlfriend, Topsy Kretz, right? Written by anonymous. Um. Oh my gosh. Uh, the tagline for this movie: "The truth will find you." First, it takes hold of your mind. <laughs> Another one: first, it takes hold of your mind. Then it takes hold of your life. Uh, or finally, the other tagline: "A number is just a number, or is it?" What's amazing is that Bud Court, Dr. Sirius Leary, also still crazy, he, uh, having the manuscript that says by Jim Carrey's character name, I can't remember what it is, um, it, he put he puts Topsy Kretz over it. So he invents the name Topsy Kretz. That's, so he must, I mean, like, he's, he, he's like, oh, well, the name should be Top Secret, but I can't just say Top Secret. Topsy Kretz? Oh, yes, okay. That I want to know what that journey is. I mean, it it feels like a dumb person trying to be clever. And I say that in the nicest way. It's like top <laughs> secret. Because it's also like it's not a top secret that he's like Topsy Kretz is not that it, it, like what it should well, be is like an anagram. Did any of us think of it? We saw the name and heard the name over and over again. And it wasn't until that prison scene where where the guy goes, yeah, the author, top secret, <laughs> that I was like, oh, no. I, I know. know. I, I, know. I, I mean, because my thought would be the, the better take on it would be that it's his name, right? Like Walter Sparrow, and yeah. you you anagram that, or like, you know, or Sparrow's Nest, right. or Sparrow's Brain, you know, some version of his name. Like, I am... Walter Sparrow, you know, but you, but you know, it's like, I don't even know how you would be, <laughs> but it's like, t- it's not top secret. It's not top secret. Oh, uh, anyway. no, it's ridiculous. Uh, folks, uh, this is, this is a, this is a fun one. I mean, wow. Uh, and it represents to headache. me. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because it's unfinished. Cause you, you're, you, 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 you didn't get closure. No. Oh God. All right. Well, uh, at that point, <laughs> thanks a lot, Paul. Sorry, guys. Thank you, April. Uh, anyone want to p- uh, want to plug anything that they got? I will plug, and it's this is not a plug, but it is just a full throated, full hearted recommendation. The movie of the year, Paul. You told me about it. I've watched it. It's called Plane, and oh, it is yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. incredible. June and I saw that in the <laughs> theater. It. it was so fun. Incredible. There's stuff. part of me that's like, should we do that on this show? Only because I would love to just. Yes. Talk about it, and maybe we should. Let's revel. Let's revel. I it. Let's love it's it. It's back. It's on VOD, and oh my gosh! And I, and again, just a giant shank, uh, shout out to Gerard Butler for giving us that amazing geostorm. You can see it on all of our socials. Uh, I love that he did that during the plane premiere. But yeah, if you are interested in playing, let us know on the Discord or on social, and maybe we should just tackle it. I know that it's fantastic. I, I loved it. Was having a blast. It was so great. Fun. It's like a it solid is- movie. Yeah. Oh, it's it's terrific. I loved every goddamn minute of it. Uh, p- please put me in plane too. Uh, oh my I, we gosh. Just, we just want to be well, in planes. Well, by the way, I want to go. I want to go this way. Well, we can get into it bigger, but I think there needs to be uh, a prequel or sequel with Skarsgård. I, I want to see uh, Mike Coulter do his incredible. Like, he that that's yeah. another movie. The, his his foreign yes. legion service, or, or, and, or I would I would be into what happens next for him as well. What whatever, wherever he goes yeah. next. Uh, amen. Got yeah, it. Man. I thought he was fantastic as well. Absolutely. Uh, what else are you up to, Jason? Uh, I want to. Oh, you know what? I want to plug. Um, I was. I did two recent appearances on uh, some other terrific podcasts that I want to get. Yeah. Uh, out there, I was a guest on uh, the fantastic Earwolf podcast uh, TV. I say with Ashley Ray, which is a fantastic show. Uh, I did a great year. If you like the 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 recommendation episodes that Paul and I do on the Last Looks, uh, this was a year end uh, recommendation uh, list with uh, me and Ashley Ray. It's a fantastic. 
show. And then I just did an episode of our friend Kulap Vilaisak uh, has a wonderful, and, and Suchin Pak have a wonderful podcast called Add to Cart. And I just did a whole episode that is... And no joke, everybody, a secret uh, pilot for Zook's Cube. By the way, I, first of all, upset that you did Zook's Cubes off of the How Did This Get Made uh, main feed. I'm so sorry. Gotta, I mean, let's be honest. It's not really uh, Zook's we, Cubes. It's Add to no, but, uh, but it I just got, was fun. I, I, You gave me a cube uh, for my birthday. I'm so excited about it, but it opened my mind to what a cube is. And maybe in Last Looks, we should talk about it a little bit because I need to understand. Did you notice that it stands flat when yes. you open it? And like I'm like, this is not how I, because what my cubes have been are simply just, by the way, if you're not hearing June's voice, she's not just sitting here quietly. She had to go. Uh, <laughs> but like, they're just like little um, formless bags. That's what the cubes I've been working Well, that, what I gave you is more of something to carry like, you know, it's a, it's got a little bit of padding. Yeah, it's yeah. got a little bit of organization. So that is more for like, I have one of those that I tra when I travel with like an Apple TV and some yes. cords and a camera. And uh, it's like, a, cause it has a little bit of padding. Yes. I put like electronics in that cube. Uh, there, there's a, like, I have a, I have a, a little electronic, we, we will get it. I want to hear, I'm going to listen into Add to Cart. Add to Cart is a great show. It's super fun. Add to Cart is a blast. Um, and I just, they, they ask people to, to bring uh, products or yeah. things that they like or enjoy uh, uh, and want to talk about. And so I just took it the opportunity to talk about backpacks and packing cubes and my favorite uh, card game, Monopoly Deal, which I also gave I, you, uh, which is Yeah, fantastic. which was amazing. Uh, and I got to play that with my kids. Uh, I will tell you that the, the thing that you've gotten uh, our family hooked on is Flushing Frenzy, which is a... Um, <laughs> <laughs> which is basically a toilet roulette. Uh, you roll a dice, you crank a toilet, and then you plunge it. And then if you you lose by when the poop shoots out. And then literally a poop with eyes. It's the best game of it all is a, It is a game that, that the game item is a toilet that you plunge and a poop shoots out the top. And whoever catches the poop gets the point. Yeah. Come on, it's, that's a fucking great game. It's a game. great game. Now, I will uh, I will also just uh, talk about a podcast I was on, and I wanted to ask your question. I wanted to ask you a question about it. So I did Dax Shepard's podcast. Sure, Armchair, Armchair Expert. They yes. love you, love you. Oh, yeah? Uh, he and Monica? Uh, yes, uh, they, they, they talk uh, so highly of you. I've never been reached out to more in my life about being on a podcast than I was oh, after yeah. that show. Did you find that too? Yes, absolutely. Like, like I, my cousins reached out to me. People who, people who I don't think have ever listened to any other podcast listen to that podcast. You know, I think that we do the show for such a long time that like no one tells us like, <laughs> "Hey, I heard your show" or whatever. So it's nice when uh, when you hear like feedback that it doesn't just go into the ether. Um, all right, so. That is it. Jason, I think I'm going to take your challenge and we're going to make a Bud Quartz crazy room. Uh, or maybe should it be Dr. <laughs> Serious? Uh, Dr. Serious Leary? Dr. Serious Leary's crazy room. We should maybe like make it like a bar shirt. Like like it's like a, like it almost looks like an advertisement for oh, a bar. Oh, or like, something it's like, a yeah, yeah. like it's a yeah, logo? Like it's a logo? Yeah, maybe that's the way to go. So check out Tee Public there. Um, and... People, uh, make sure you listen to uh, Last Looks because we got some big surprises coming up. We always have good special guests. Jason and I are breaking down a lot of stuff. We're getting into cubes. We're getting into podcasts, everything there. Uh, and a big thank you to our entire team. I'm talking about the amazing producerial work of Scott Sani, Molly Reynolds, and our movie picking producer, Avril Halley, our engineer, Alex Gonzalez, and our publisher, July Diaz. People, they make the trains run and we love them. So we will see you next week for Last Looks. And until then, bye for now.